I want you to imagine, I want you to imagine the best dream of your life coming true. What would be the best dream you could ever have come true? One of the stories of the Bible that precedes today's is that of John the Baptist. You know that. And how, how an old couple had prayed and prayed and prayed for a baby. We don't have any of that inkling with Mary. She's just a young woman who has a dream. We don't know if she was dreaming about being a mother or not. Most most young women of that day were, but we don't know what she was dreaming about until this came along. And in today's text, there is a dream that comes along that will change her life. And I'd like you to look at, at it with me on the screen. It's from the Gospel of Luke, and it's chapter 1, verses 26 through 38. I want you to see how Luke frames the story. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy. Now remember, Elizabeth is that elderly cousin of Mary who's going to have a baby. Remember that miraculous event. God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. And Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Don't be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You'll conceive and give birth to a son, and you're to call him Jesus. He'll be great and be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David. And he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary said to the angel, since I'm a virgin? And the angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you, so the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her own old age, and she who was said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month. For no word from God will ever fail. Notice what Mary said. I am the Lord's servant, May your word to me be fulfilled. And the angel left. Oh my goodness. What in the world would you have thought if you had a vision, a dream, an experience like that? Only one person in history ever had it. There's nobody to talk to about it, is there? There's nobody to go say, how did that feel? What's going on here? I want to suggest to you that what we're going to talk about today is being afraid to do God's will. Am I ever afraid to do God's will? Am I ever hesitant to do something that God has asked me to do because it seems too audacious, too taxing, too challenging? So I want you to go back with me to Mary. Her words, let it happen. Here I am. I'm ready to do whatever you want, God. Well, I don't think she had a clue all that was going to take place. If you've ever, if you've ever become a parent and held that six pound, eight ounce, or whatever size child you had, how many of you could begin to conceive of all the things that were going to take place over the next 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 years? Did any of you ever imagine when you're in the hospital holding him or her for the first time, everything that was going to happen? How, how many adventures you're going to undergo? How much money you're going to spend? How many nights you're going to be up asking God, what's going on here? I want you to think about Mary for a second. Let it be. 
I'm the Lord's servant. But then reality strikes. Reality strikes and she has a baby bump and people around town start calling, talking about her. She goes off to Judea, 40, 50, 60 miles down to be with Elizabeth because the talk is just too scandalous and she can't handle it anymore. She comes back and it's time for a census. You couldn't do it online. Got to go a long way. And she gets 90 miles from home. Now, you imagine giving birth 90 miles from home. It might as well have been 9,000 miles in our day. And then your husband has a dream, and he says, listen, we got to go to Egypt. we got to go another six, seven, eight hundred miles. Let's go, Mary. Get the baby. Get the crib. Get the bassinet. Let's go. And then you bring him home. And he starts to grow up. And every day as he's growing up, you're wondering, what happened to that dream that I had so long ago? Where is that angel that showed up in the middle of the night? And suddenly, suddenly when you're middle-aged, your son begins to do something. And people begin to follow him. And you just wonder, how scary is it to do what God wants me to do? And then just as he seems to be sweeping the nation, just as people are saying your son might become king, they up and kill him. And you stand there and you watch the most horrendous thing in the world and your mind goes back to that vision and you wonder if it was worth it all watching your son be nailed to a cross watching him agonize as you would not want your worst enemy to agonize was it worth it? I want you to think about three ideas with me this morning about doing God's will because this business of being afraid, fear not, the angel says to Mary in the middle of the night, don't be afraid, Mary. Mary had lots of reasons to be afraid, didn't she? The most horrendous being on that Friday in Jerusalem when she watched him die. Three ideas. The first idea, this business of following God's dreams. If God gives you a dream, it may not be as majestic as Mary's. It may not be quite as dramatic as Mary's. It may be more subtle. It may be more simple. But if God gives you a dream, we may join Mary in discovering that following God's dreams isn't always that easy. She's eight, eight and a half months pregnant. And her husband says, we got to go on a trip. We got to walk 90 miles. We got to go all the way to Knoxville. There's no interstates, there's just a path. How's that feel? I can't imagine what she endured physically, can you? Just imagine how it felt to travel when you're about to give birth. You may have discovered that God's called you to do something. And it's just not as easy as you thought it would be. Maybe it's more challenging than anything you could ever imagine. If so, you're going to join a woman named Mary way back when. Second thing I want you to see, this business of following God's dreams for us, they may not make sense in an earthly realm. This one certainly didn't. The Spirit of God will come upon you. It's going to be different. We get If we're not careful, we moderns get all worked up in the biology and lose the mystery. But here's the mystery. God came in the form of a baby. The most outlandish part of it all is that that baby in that manger, crying and doing what babies do, is the face of God. Doesn't make any sense at all until it saves you. The third thing I want you to see, when we follow God's dream for us, 
we may be afraid of the future. We may be in a very comfortable position in life. We may be retired. We may be secure in our occupation. We may be very comfortable in what we're doing. And all of a sudden, God gives us a dream. I, I, I'm sure Mary's life was going to be pretty simple up in Nazareth. She's probably, you know, most people think 14, 15 years old. She's lived in this little village of three or 400 people. She knows everybody. Everybody knows her. Joseph's got a career. He's going to be a carpenter. He's going to work with his hands. Everything's going to be great. They probably have discussed their lives, how it's going to unfold, where they're going to send the kids to school. Well, there's only one synagogue because there's not a lot of choice. But they're going to, what's going to happen, how, how they're going to do. And all of a sudden, all of a sudden, there's reason to be afraid. What did she have to fear? Now, the Bible doesn't tell us this. This is just strictly my imagination, all right? But I want you to imagine Mary's an old lady. We don't know how long she lived. After the crucifixion, she disappears at the resurrection. I want you to imagine she's an old lady. Somebody goes over to see her. I'd like to interview you for the Jerusalem Post. Mary, what was it like that night so long ago when you had a vision, an angel came to see? What was it like? What was it like the night those shepherds came? Mary, what was it like when you're staying in a Staying in a barn. What was it like giving birth in a barn? Mary, what was it like when you took him to the temple when he's 12 and he got lost and you didn't know where he was for three days? Did you, did you worry, Mary? Mary, what was it like when you watched him? What was it like when you watched him give sight to the blind? What was it like to see your son touch somebody and they get up and walk? What kind of a pride did you feel, Mary? Did, you, did your heart just burst within you? Mary, what was it like when you stood there and watched him? What was it like when you heard him utter those words, it is finished. Mary, what was it like on Easter morning when you got him back only to watch him go to heaven 40 days late? What was it like, Mary? And then I want you to imagine. I want you to imagine a summary question. Mary, was it worth it? Would you do it all over again? If you could change history the night the angel showed up, would you just tell the angel to go away and just have a normal Nazareth life? Mary, would you do it? What do you think she'd say? What do you think she'd say? What would you say? What would you say if God if God gave you a big dream? Maybe today. Maybe not to give birth. But maybe to take a foster child home. Or maybe to care for somebody in a nursing home. What would it be like if God said to you, I've got this dream for you. You see, I think that's what we're going to do as a church in the new year. There's a phrase you're going to hear over and over again in the next several weeks. I read it somewhere. I can't even remember who the author was, but it's so good I'm going to steal it for mine. And it's this, what will happen if you don't do what God asks you to do, 
What will happen if you don't do what God has called you to do? God would have found somebody else. But Mary, Mary, was it worth it? Oh, don't you know she said it? Oh, my. Oh, there's no doubt. Maybe somebody's going to interview you 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years from now. Maybe it's just you and God. I've given you a dream. I've given you something to do. I've given you the capacity to do it. And you follow that dream. And when that interview comes, was it worth it?